Okay, this is part two of the uh, video from section 1.2 focusing on functions. We're still dealing with some domain range problems. We're going to do one more here where it's kind of hard to uh, graph points. You could if you wanted to. You could build like an X, Y table. And we, we could do that, but instead of doing that, we're going to actually... Um, we could have our, our computer or our calculator generate a table for us. But first thing, I want to get it to where it's kind of user-friendly to enter into the TI-84. So instead of... I don't like doing a, you know, cube roots or square roots of any of that. I don't like using that root symbol in the calculator. I'd rather just use the fractional exponent, so instead of this being to the cube root, I'm going to raise it to the one-third power. Those are the same thing. It's just another way of writing it. So this is 1,330, 1 minus x squared, all to the one-third power. And I'm going to put that in my, in your calculator, you can put that in the, the y1 line. You hit that little y equals button. So let's go out to uh, the calculator there, and we're going to put that in, um, and then work this out. Okay, so um, I'm, I've put the graph, uh, the function in my calculator, and when you go to graph it, you might get a weird looking window, so I'm just going to go to the, the regular zoom standard window. You might see a blank window. If you want to fix that, usually if you go to zoom, and then you see the option zero there, zoom fit, it at least lets you see the graph, so you can see where, uh, even if you don't know where it is, because you, know, you, you don't want to have to plot it yourself. Um, also something you could do to kind of find what a good idea for the window is, hit second, go to table. If you notice here, at zero, you see how it goes up to 11? So that should tell you in your window, you want your y max to be at least, you know, what the max of the function is. In fact, I'm going to edit that too. I want to kind of get a better picture of this graph. I want to make that 12. I want to make my y min say, uh, let's make it something like negative 20. Okay? And then uh, when I go to graph that, you can see like a you know a little bit of the shape there. If I want to see like a little further out, uh, I could zoom out if I wanted to. Um, uh, some things you can play with to zoom. Hit zoom, hit three, enter, and you can zoom out as much as you want on these graphs. And then you can see it kind of like makes like a little uh, different shape there. But all I care is that this thing seems to just keep going down, um, and it. Uh, it has a max at 11, so that's how I know my range is going to be. Uh, it's going to go down to infinity, which you can really uh, infer from the, just put bigger and bigger values of x here, and it's going to go up, the highest is going to go to 11, which we saw from the table, and we saw from just the shape of the graph in general. All right, we're going to do the same thing, the same test here, uh, by finding out all right, what is f of negative x. And that's just going to be the fifth root of, put negative x in, in place of x. And let's compare that to, let's find out what negative uh, f of x is. Um, negative f of x would be, uh, this would be negative uh, fifth root of, so of the function there. Now here's the thing, since if you take the fifth root of a negative number, you get a negative. Or if you take the fifth root of a positive number, you get a positive, and here it's multiplied by a negative. So these, um, these two values here, actually f of negative x and negative f of x are the same, and that's the rule for something being odd, is if f of negative x equals uh, negative f of x, or sometimes I, I think I may have transposed it. Uh, and the other way. Uh, if f of x equal to negative f of negative x, you could see it that way too. So this one's going to be odd. Um, we're going to graph a piecewise defined function. Uh, what that is, is it follows different rules depending where in the domain you are. If you're less than 1, so let's look at where 1 is. It could be right around here. Uh, just halfway between uh, this is 0, 2, 4. So here's 1 in your domain. All right, it follows the rule of a linear function x minus 5, so slope of 1, y-intercept of negative 5. So as long as you're less than 1, it's going to follow that rule. It's going to go you know, up 1 over 1, so it's here. It's at negative 5, uh, 0 comma negative 5, and it's going to go up 1 to negative 4 and over 1 to 1. And it has this you know, slope of 1 all the way through, and I'm just going to kind of roughly sketch it. So a slope of 1, but after that, after 1, so at 1 it has follows this rule, and every time before it follows that rule. But after that, it's a constant function of just negative 4, so it's just negative 4 
all the way as long as the domain values are bigger than one. So that's a piecewise defined function. We'll, we'll do a, a couple more like that. So uh, let this one at negative four, or really at values less than negative four. So I'm, actually, I'm gonna put an open circle uh, because it doesn't follow this rule at four. But when you're less than four, it follows the rule of the function uh, uh, linear function x plus 5. So slope of 1, y-intercept of 5. Now, I am going to graph it right here. I'm going to graph the y-intercept of 5, even though I'm, that's not where this goes. Just so I can kind of get an idea, I'm going to graph like sort of the, the ghost of this line if it did continue to this domain. And it has a slope of 1, so I, I kind of have to go backwards since so I'm going left. I want to go uh, here I'm at 5, and then I'm going to go down 1 over 1. Uh, down one, over one, down one, over one. Now let's actually plot those points uh, while I name them down one, over one, which would be here, and then so that kind of corresponds to um, that corresponds to the negative four. And an easier way to do this probably would have been to all right at negative four. What would be the value of x plus five or five plus x? Well, it would be positive one. So I could have just plotted one there. And I really only need one other point. So let's look at what this thing is. Let's look at, like, say, negative six. Well, this would be, so negative six uh, would map to negative one. You know, once you plug negative six in here. If you do negative seven, that would map, map to negative two. So I could just, instead of doing the y-intercept thing, I could. it's actually easier to plug in the values and go. So at negative six, I should have a uh, y value of minus 1. At negative 7, I should have a y value of minus 2. So the graph is going to look like, uh, again, I, I'm going to have an open circle here because it doesn't necessarily follow uh, that rule at 4, just everything above 4. So 4, negative 4, 1, and it has a, you know, just a slope right there. And I'm just kind of roughly sketching it. Uh, then in between negative 4 and positive 5, so I'm going to kind of mark off where positive 5 is, it follows this rule of a line that uh, has a slope of negative 1 and would go through the origin. But I'm just going to plot points. So at negative 4, since it does follow the rule at negative 4, this is equal to negative whatever the number is, whatever x is. So it's negative negative 4, so it's positive 4. So it would be this point right here. And so at negative uh, 2, it would be 2, you know. At uh, negative uh, 1, it would be 1. You know, at 0, it would be 0. And they would just keep following this rule all the way. So it's just a line with a slope of negative 1 all the way until it kind of crosses this threshold right here. And that's not a vertical asymptote, just so you know. I'm just kind of seeing where my how far I can go with that. So I go all the way right here until I'm at basically uh, the point five comma negative five. And then then it follows this rule. It's uh, it's a at when you're bigger than five, which they happen to coincide here. Uh, when you're bigger than five, it has a slope. Uh, it's a line with a slope of positive one. So it will look like that. And that's that piecewise defined function. You can just plot a couple points uh, using um, each rule with respect to where you are in the domain. All right, now is this graph a function? Now this is something that should be familiar. What makes a function a function? You have to remember the, you know, you can have uh, two x values with the same y value. For instance, one of my favorite functions, f of x equals x squared. Now, these same two y values, if we look at the point 2 comma 4 and negative 2 comma 4, the y's, you know, this four, this four is a player. He's a, uh, he's hanging out here. He's hanging out with two of oh, but here four, you know, the y value four is hanging out with negative two. So the y's can cheat on the x's. But here's the thing: the x's can't cheat on the y's. You can't have, for instance, if you look right here, this is the point negative two comma three, and then this is the point negative two comma negative three. That's not okay to have one x value that has two different y values. You can have um, a y value that is mapped to by two different uh, x values, but not the other way around. Now, the, the short answer to this is vertical line tests. Remember that? It spells vertical line tests, so it's not going to 
be a function. Now, if it, if it fails the horizontal line test, this function is not a one-to-one -one function. So if your y's cheat on your x's, it's not a one-to-one -one function, but it is still a function. This this graph here, it's not one-to-one, -one and it's not even a function. So it's it's it uh, fails all that. Um, he, this function right here, again, use a vertical line test, fails, easy enough. So this thing's not a function because you're you have one, you have a, you have many instances of it happening, many places where you fail the vertical line test uh, in this function, but you can't have an x value with more than one y value here. Um, if you wanted to find a graph for this piecewise find function, again, that was one like we graphed before. I'm going to do this, and we do the little Scottish brackets there. Now this thing right here clearly is so it's it follows this rule between domain values 0 and 2 so it follows this rule for when it's x is bigger than 0 if I read from right to left and when x is less than or equal to 2 and so we have uh, it seems to have a slope let's see we're going down 6 over 2 if we go down 6 and over 2 that's a slope of negative 3 over 1 or just negative 3 so it's negative 3x alright the other rule it follows it falls on the domain values from bigger than 2, between 2 and 10, essentially. So when x is bigger than 2, not including 2, because that's why the open circle here. But when it's less than or equal to 2, I know it's less than or equal because that's a filled in dot there. It follows this rule where it goes down, let's see, we're at 4 here, down 4 over 8. So down 4 over 8, rise over run. So it's got a slope of negative one half so it's just the, the line negative one half x oh I did make a mistake here earlier that's not just a line with a slope of negative three x it's got a y intercept of six and this line now I want to kind of carry it over to kind of see where it would have a y intercept and instead of just trusting that I'm, I, I'm drawing that line correctly uh, what I want to do is this if you can see the slope is it is down one over two down one over two or you can think of it as it's left two up one left two up one so I'm gonna go left two up one and you know if I drew a, a straight line I'd see that the y intercept is five so it follows this rule negative three x plus six between zero and two and it follows this rule negative one half x plus five there so this is the, the formula for the piecewise defined function there um,